All right, welcome back. So I gotta admit something to you. So the last, I've already done this video once. I'm not big into like rehearsing, doing anything like that. You know, I'm kind of a one shoot person either way. So when I went to record this, recorded the whole thing is about 14 minutes, 30 seconds. And then when I looked at the video in retrospect, I realized I had my phone flipped the wrong way and I wasn't even looking at the camera. So we're gonna give this another shot. Take two. All right, so welcome. Glad to have you guys. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look over our philosophy syllabus, okay? So hopefully you've already had a chance to look over it. You know, I sent it out not only to your email, I posted it to Google Classroom as well. So we'll go over this. Hopefully you've already looked over it, but we're gonna do it together just to make sure we're on the same page. So that being said, all right, let's look at, well, let's go ahead and start. So the first, the first uh, section, general information. So you got my name, uh, you've got the room number, which right now may not apply too much, but if you come in for tutoring, which I highly recommend, come in for tutoring, um, 204 History Hall. So if you're, I know, I know we've got some freshmen. So if you come in the building, go past the office, uh, you know, past the commons near the gym, take a left and just keep following it down. And it'll be, uh, when you enter the history hallway, it'll be the second door on your left. Um, got the school phone, phone number there. Uh, I mean, you can call it if you want to, but uh, the best way to get in touch with me is through email. Uh, so I got my email address, uh, this jt underscore trogdon at urhrder.org. Uh, that is the best way to get in touch with me. So much like everybody else in the 21st century, I have my phone on me most of the time. So that is the best way to get in touch with me and me to get back as quickly as possible to you. It also allows like a transcript. So, you know, in, in writing, I know what you need. And in writing, I reply back to you of what you need to do. So it's just a little bit less that gets lost in translation than if you're calling somebody on the phone. What do you need for this class? Second section. <clears throat> so. Uh, I need a computer, a tablet, and a laptop. Uh, I didn't put phone on here, but you know, obviously, I think that most of the things you do in here can be done on your phone. You should have a Chromebook. Hopefully, all of you have your Chromebook. But if you don't, again, you need some type of technological device. Uh, second thing you need is internet access. So, and I've been thinking about this one. If you don't have internet access, then I don't know how you're watching this video. Um, I hadn't figured that one out yet. Um, but either way, if you do not have internet access, you need to let either me, another teacher, Mr. Wheat, somebody know so we can kind of uh, put you on the list, make sure you get a flash drive so that you're getting all the work that you need to get. Uh, make sure that you do that. Make sure that you do that. So the third thing, number three, third thing that you need for this class, discipline, discipline. That's almost like a bad word to some people. Uh, but discipline, you need that. I learned, and I think a lot of us learned, um, you know, when this whole lockdown thing started back in March, that, you know, it's pretty easy to get distracted, especially when you're at home. Me personally, there's a reason why I'm in class every day. It's because I know I'm more disciplined here than I am going to be at home. If I'm at home, it's, you know, I get distracted by my wife, by my dogs, uh, by, you know, seeing, you know, the grass is a little too high because uh, I, I mow every like third or fourth day. That's just, I don't know. That's just, I'm OCD about that maybe. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. But you need discipline. So if that means that you need to, you know, go to a different room because if your computer and your Xbox are in the same room, you're not setting yourself up for, for too much success. Uh, so do what you need to do to get your work in. Uh, lastly, number four, you need a sense of humor. <clears throat> I think I'm a pretty funny guy. I can be. No, they're not always. I'm definitely not that photogenic, videogenic. I don't know if videogenic's a word, uh, but we're gonna use it. Uh, but, you know, you guys come to class and I think we're gonna have a really good time. I love the interaction with you guys. You guys are a lot funnier than me and you make me a lot funnier than I really am. Uh, but you do need a sense of humor because, you know, you can't take, can't take life too seriously. Take it too seriously, you don't enjoy it. 
<clears throat> All right, so let's look at official course description. So I'm just gonna read through this verbatim, and then we'll look and talk a little bit more about what topics we're actually gonna cover. So uh, philosophy is an elective course designed to familiarize students with the major areas of the discipline of philosophy. This course will allow students to engage with the major questions and approaches from each area of philosophy. Each major area of philosophy and its accompanying questions will serve as one unit within the structure of the course. The six general themes of philosophy are logic, epistemology, metaphysics, ethics, political philosophy, and aesthetics. If you're wondering why I'm looking like over here, is, I got my computer. Uh, I just noticed that you can't see that. <clears throat> All right, so what are we exactly going to be learning about? Well, we're going to be learning about logic and logical thinking and making logical arguments. Uh, this is essentially why debate is important, not um, not debate in the sense of like arguing, like, yeah, you're right, I'm, you know, no, no, nobody says that. Nobody says you're right, I'm wrong, that angrily. Uh, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, you know, you got to do this, I, I get to do that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a, a pursuit of truth and how not necessarily for the people that are debating to be the topics, but, you know, actually... Uh, the matter at hand to be the topic and to discover, again, what is right, what is truthful, for lack of a better word. I don't think there really is any better word. Truth. All right, anyways. <clears throat> uh, so the basis of knowledge. So yesterday you probably heard the word epistemology for the first time in your life. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. It's just a fancy word for what we know, how we know it, and why do we know that it's true. That's essentially all that we're talking about. Or that's, no, it's not essentially all that we're talking about, but that is essentially what epistemology means. So we're going to be looking at the basis of knowledge. So how do we know these things? How do we know that, you know, the grass really is green? Just for example, I just looked at the window. That was the first thing that popped up. <clears throat> um, reality versus perception. A big, uh, one of the most famous philosophical quotes is perception is reality. Um, do you believe that? Uh, I think that's a good place to start. Do you believe that perception is reality? Or you know, can we break it down as to your perception is your reality? Or is there some objective reality? Or is everything only seen through the lens of the individual? These are kind of some of the things we're going to be talking about. Um, and sometimes we won't have like concrete answers just because it is beyond science. That is very much a metaphysical question we were talking about yesterday, beyond physics, beyond what is measurable. Uh, ethics and morality. So what is right and wrong? What is right and wrong? What actions are right and what actions are wrong? You know, we have hundreds of representatives in Congress that, you know, they argue over this every day. What is right and what is wrong for you know, the entire country? Um, so <clears throat> ethics and morality, we're essentially talking about how can we live life to its fullest? Uh, so, uh, you know, an example question would be, so if everyone is, you know, stealing, does that make it right? And should you do it? You know, that, that's where ethics and morality comes in. Uh, government and its citizens. So when we talk about government and citizens, we're not, we're not talking, you know, when I say political philosophy, I'm not talking like, you know, again, Democrats and Republicans and talking modern things. No, more so uh, we're looking at kind of what is behind that, what is behind that. So, um, you know, how do humans behave? And based on how humans behave, how should they be governed? Can people coexist with authority, and how do they coexist? We know they do coexist, but how do they coexist? And is it, you know, is different forms of, of government, are they, are they pragmatic? Can they kind of ebb and flow with the times and adapt to them, or are they very rigid? These are kind of some of the things we'll be looking at with the government and citizens. Uh, the essence of art, why art is important, um, why people create music if they're not making money for it. Like, why do people do that? We talked about that a little bit yesterday. Uh, again, that'll be one of the topics that we continue on. Uh, the last one that I've listed on here is mind versus matter. So this is a pretty big difference of Western philosophy and Eastern philosophy. So when we talk Western philosophy, we're talking about the Americas. Uh, we're talking about Europe and parts of Africa. And in the Eastern world, we're talking about the other half of the world. Uh, so we're talking about Asia primarily. <clears throat> but there are a lot of big countries in Asia. Uh, you know, China, Russia, 
India, you know, very populated countries as well. So there are two very distinct ideas in Western philosophy and Eastern philosophy. Uh, Western philosophy believes there are two separate realities, a spiritual reality, which would more so be the mind, and then the material reality, which would be, yeah, again, the matter aspect of this. While in Eastern philosophy, they believe that, that all is one, that there is one reality, that it is made up of both the spiritual and material things. So, uh, that'll be a topic of discussion for us as well. Uh, what kind of assignments can you expect? So 20% of your grade is going to be classwork, which is like bell ringers and polls. This is more so of a way for me to keep attendance and also to keep you daily uh, engaged in this class. So it will be daily small small assignments, uh, and that will count as classwork, 20%. 25% uh, of your grade would be minor activities. This is Typically where quizzes would go, I like to do like notebook quizzes, like once or twice a week, but because we are not um, you know, in here, I thought it would be a little bit easier just to kind of broaden this up a little bit. So like minor activities would be like video discussion guys, primary source analysis, um, <clears throat> you know, small little write-ups here and there. There would be some reading. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great people throughout our past that we need to kind of engage with their ideas a little bit. And the best way to do that is through reading. 25% um, <clears throat> are gonna be projects, so like presentations, whether that be a slideshow, this, that, or the other, short essays. I'm a big believer in writing. If you can write about something, then you know it. And you know, if you can write about it and you can talk about it, you, you've got it down. Uh, simulations, we'll kind of come back to that later. Uh, and then assessments. Uh, will be 30%, uh, that is tests and exams. There are tests in here, even though it's an elective class. Um, I don't make them, I, I try to make them to where, again, they make you think. They, you know, philosophy isn't necessarily something where it's too important for you just to have a bunch of factual information, but more so, again, a, a way of thinking. Being curious, that's how you learn anything is by asking questions. Um, you know, somebody can teach you, but unless you're actually curious, how much are you really listening to, you know, the other side of it, to their actual response, unless you're curious. So that's a big part of our class is going to be learning essentially to become our own teacher. Yeah, dang, I might not want to do that. I might be out of a job, but you know, got to do what's best for, for everybody else, I guess. So uh, what about makeup work? All right, so makeup work, you know, all of, all of your assignments are in a running tab on Google Classroom, so you, all have, you always have access to it, but if for some reason you cannot, you know, you can not complete the work, whether it be because you're sick, um, God forbid there's a death in the family, uh, if you break both your hands and you can't type, let me know these things. Talk to me, email me. Uh, I'm, you know, I want to work with you. That's why I got the teaching. It wasn't to, you know, punish kids. It was to work with you and help you. So let me know and we can figure something out, okay? Uh, how often will grades be entered in? So grades will be entered in weekly. Uh, so Monday through Thursday, you'll you know get your stuff done. You'll have it all submitted by Friday. There will be individual due dates along the way, but on Friday, I'm going to take all the work that you've done and I'm going to grade it. On Friday, I'll you know attempt to put some grades in. Uh, sometimes I'll get it all done, sometimes I won't. So it may be Saturday and Sunday, but your grades will be current each Monday. Okay, so be patient with me. Uh, and if it's Saturday at eight o'clock at night and I'm out having a good time and I get an email from you saying, why ain't my grade been updated? Uh, probably not gonna respond to you until Monday. Um, <clears throat> can I turn in assignments late? Yes, you can. I will accept late work. So I'm trying to be, again, I'm trying to, trying to keep you guys accountable, but also I understand there's gonna be some issues that come up. So typically what I do is I deduct 10 points per day, but for this first term, I'm gonna deduct five points per day, um, it, for per day it's late. So if it is five days late, okay, five times five, 25. Told you I was good at multiplication. So five times five, 25, that means the highest grade you can get is a 75. Uh, if it's 10 days late, weekends included, highest grade you can get is a 50. Uh, that does not mean that you will get a 50. That means that I will grade it, and then I will deduct the points afterwards, okay? Even if it's four or five weeks late, uh, I will, golly, four or five weeks late, that sounds crazy. 
Um, but I believe it's more important for you to get the work in and challenge yourself than just take the zero to the easy way out. All right, so, um, you know, we'll get back and look at some expectations here in just a little bit, uh, but looking forward to working with you guys. All right, let's do it.